All right, welcome back to the Art of Approach podcast, episode nine. My name is Timothy Bray. Will Mulvaney. And we are both dating and approach coaches at theartofapproach.com. You can find out more information about our program at theartofapproach.com. And in this podcast today, as with every podcast that we do, we review dating advice. Uh, dating advice we might find on Instagram or Reddit, or we, and we even answer questions from our community as well. So with that said, Will, would you like to take us off? Let's do it. All right. First up is Instagram. Coming from JX Dating. I am so sick of hearing guys say, girls only want assholes. They don't ever want to date the nice guy. This is the biggest misconception in dating. You have to realize these girls have had trauma. They have been with a guy that has verbally or physically abused them. Their relationship has been like a roller coaster, ups and downs. And so they get used to the toxicity. So when a nice guy comes along, they get bored. They're not used to this. They don't want this kind of relationship. A healthy relationship they want the toxicity because that's all they know so if you hear a girl say oh i don't want to be with the nice guy i like the asshole or blah 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 think to yourself well this is probably not a girl you want to be in a relationship with because she has a lot of trauma now don't get me wrong there is a difference between being a simp and a nice guy but if you are genuinely a nice person and some girl is like oh i don't want to be with him because of that her loss not a high value girl move on all right tim what do you think beautiful I love this. Um, yeah, I feel like she sums that up to a T. When I saw that one before, I was just, my mind was just blown. Um, yeah. yeah, so she nailed it. Um, I think one of the biggest things tripping me up when I started to hear this term bad boy versus nice guy was this idea in my mind that like, you had to be like a jerk or you had to be inconsiderate and not care about people's feelings, not have empathy. But that's not really what we're talking about here. What we're really talking about is a man that commands his own life, that takes control and leads by the things that he cares about and values. And he's not interested in letting people walk all over him, essentially. Right. You know, I think. When we're nice guys, what we're really doing is we're really we're really um, sacrificing our needs to create an outcome. I mean, really, that's what it all comes down to is nice guys will shut up, they'll they'll take their place just so that they can ensure that things run smoothly. And in our program, we call this like a racket, keeping something having something present in our life where we are basically sacrificing ourselves to have that outcome for that purpose. So yeah, nice guys fall into that category because, you know, our world right now, the social world that we have out there is really calling, calling bad people out, right? You see that all across the board. Um, there's, a, you know, there's the terms toxic masculinity that are being thrown around and, you have people that are very abusive on that front. Um, so there is very much like a sort of call to action for people to be nice. And I think it's great for people to be nice. Uh, you know, the less hate, the better, in my opinion. But when it comes down to sacrificing your own desires, to sacrificing the way that you like to see the world, your values, your principles, that's where you end up getting into a category of men who really, really suffer because they're just not really. They're just not really speaking out. Yes. They're outsourcing their values. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah, you can be caring. You can be kind. I like to um, make the distinction between kind and nice. Yeah. Because I, like I don't that. think nice isn't really something you need to try to be. Mm. Like, or I, sh I should say it's not something to strive for. Mm. I think kind is what you, what you would prefer. Because when I think of nice, I think of someone trying to appear kind so try to be kind yes be caring be all of that um be giving but yeah like you were saying it's not don't put yourself your you know your values out there and say oh decide this for me don't be so like fluid with who you are figure out who you are and put that out there 
yeah be that fully yeah 100 percent, man um nice feels like you're you're forcing something to happen whereas kind yeah. just kind of feels like a natural way of being yeah and like with nice people like it's hard to really appreciate like what they say you know you know when someone's just nice all the time and then you're like do you really mean it like yeah. it's hard to it loses its meaning i remember like i think it was dave Chappelle had a joke about how he trusted people in the south more because they were more willing to use that exploitative term uh freely and and out in the open as where people up in the north tended to keep it under wraps and yeah so like it feels like it feels like yeah when you're when you're covering something up like that then you know it, it's more dangerous you yeah. know and this is this is across the board with um across the board with all kinds of um all kinds of points along the dating the dating process the courtship process if we are if we're withholding our desires if we're not saying the things we want to say making the moves that we want to make um being the kind of people that we authentically are as we're dating we are going to we are going to essentially leave the idea in the woman's mind that we're not a man that expresses our desires and that's dangerous because she doesn't know how that is she doesn't know how those desires are going to come out because she knows they're there she can tell that she can tell that you're desiring something women are very intuitive in this kind of sense you're a guy yeah and uh yeah exactly and so if she knows you have those desires which she knows and you don't act upon them then she's afraid that they're going to come out in some kind of malicious or subversive type of way yeah it seems like you're sneaking around to get what you want without yeah. being clear about what you want right and that's dangerous to them they, they feel unsafe around very dangerous yes and so that's um yeah so when she talks about masculinity it's kind of like owning every part of yourself yeah and having every part of yourself expressed to the world as well yeah 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 that, totally that's a great one though guys you should really listen up to those like to those words yeah <laughs> yes so it's not yeah again don't it's not that they hate nice guys it's that they're they don't like the guys who are hiding yeah their true desires absolutely or so fluid with who they are that they're just you know fitting themselves into what they think the girl will like yes to try and get what, what you want yes and all those bad boy qualities they all come down to how confident are you in who you are mm -hmm. how what do you defining what you stand for what your desires are and walking the earth being feeling very willing and free to let everyone know exactly what you're all about that's what being a bad bad boy is yes. it's not being an asshole yeah yeah like bad boy just is the wrong term it's a terrible term and it yeah. gets a lot of people confused but you know it is it is also like if you see a guy that freely expresses his desires and says what he wants and asks asks for what he wants you know it, kind of sometimes you can misinterpret that for being a dick you know um and there are a lot of guys that cross that that bounds and actually are dicks <laughs> so it's just the re reality is if you want to if you want to be kind in the world if you want to be good if you want to be benevolent you can still you can still fit into that category of the type of man that women really want. Why, why do you think that is that it's, it is like, at least from what we've seen, it's the dick who like has those other qualities as well. It's, it's the, the bad boy, the asshole that has those other qualities that has like the qualities of the bad boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, cause he's, cause he commands what he wants. Mm -hmm. He takes what he wants. And he has no, apologies for what he's getting and he doesn't right. feel like he owes anyone an, an explanation or anything mm -hmm. so that's you know that's the extremity of where that can go um and you know that a lot of a lot of women that i've known get attached to that type of person because 
they have those qualities that they're looking for, but the women that get attached to those kind of situations also have traumas, and those traumas basically reinf the 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 way that the guy acts reinforces their traumas and they're they're hooked. That's where they get into trouble. Is when they're when women are not looking for the for the for the good qualities, they're sacrificing themselves. Like the reverse of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. It's a, it's a good note. And it's funny because we me and Tim were talking about it like right before and then we pulled this up. It was like perfect. Mm -hmm. Um all right, let's go to Reddit. Um this one is titled just I need first date ideas. Uh, this person <laughs> is having trouble with um, with online dating, setting up the first date activity. Um, so his friends usually say a dinner date or coffee, but he hates coffee and dinner dates can be hit or miss since you don't really know the person. Um, and yeah, so once you've met someone in person, it's easier to like plan the next date, which that makes sense. Um, and then he's just wondering where, what's the recommendation? Um, so I would, first of all, I would agree like dinner is kind of like a, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend dinner on a first date. No. Um, and, and this doesn't matter if it's online dating or if you met them in person, maybe if this was someone you like knew you were getting to know them as a friend and then like express interest, then maybe dinner makes sense. Um, but I definitely think dinner is like, wait until it's further along yeah i mean i know for myself i know for a lot of guys that if especially if we're about to go on a date with a really cute girl we feel like we have to over amp up that first date oh yeah make an impression right oh yeah but it is and and, and the reason we're doing that is because we're kind of blinded by their looks but we have no idea what is at the core of this woman. We have no idea what really sits in our heart. And so we just blindly, blindly make that assumption that she's everything just by her looks. I know I've done that so many times. Um, uh, what, uh, what's the perfect date? I mean, I guess that the, the mindset, though, should be how am I going to take, how am I going to, I mean, you really want to actually pretend that you're on a date with an average looking girl that you're not super excited <laughs> about, uh, at least in the mindset kind of department, because ultimately that's the reality is that, yeah, she might have all the looks, but there's a lot of other things that guys overlook that they actually really want. And they get disappointed after the veil is dropped. So as far as mindset wise, it's best to think in terms of like, what if this was just an average girl that I was just like slightly interested in? And how would I how would I present myself in that first date then? As far as like dates in general, though, like you really need to. It needs to be something that um, increases in like the dates need to increase in intensity as you go. As far as the planning, as far as like putting things together. Uh, at the beginning, it needs to be very casual because ultimately you don't really have any reason to overexert yourself. Going back to like putting yourself in the mindset of just like, oh, this is just an average date. Um, so really the first date really needs to have all of the environment set up so that you can have conversation because really the first day is getting to know the basics. Like what are, what are you all about? Where do you stand on things? Is there, are there deal breakers? So what I highly recommend is just having just a very simple, basic environment that you can work in, and then also perhaps have plans after that to, if, if the date goes well, to have some backup plans. But the way you want to talk about it to the, with, the, with the woman that you're interested in is you don't have any plans at all. This is going back to something... We were talking about that Zan Perion talked about how he basically invites a woman into a on, onto a date of nothing. And I love that idea because it creates mystery, it creates possibility, it creates adventure by saying like, you know, 
uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but why don't you meet me at this place? And then, and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. I think there's a place to, if you are really into her, I think there's a place to still go in with that, but it has to be from like the lens of beauty. Like you, you can get, get excited because you're attracted to someone as long as you don't lose yourself in that and start to overthink what the date means. Um, but I definitely agree. Like, yeah, you don't want to put too much on that first date. Like I was saying, like dinner is just, I don't know. I don't think it's the best way to initially get to know someone. It's like, you're kind of locking into a long thing when you don't know them at all. You guys don't know each other. Um, so definitely something a little more casual where you can just get a feel for the other person. Yeah. Um, definitely makes sense. Yeah. And you're going to get excited. I mean, there's nothing that's going to stop you from getting excited, but I, I question the excitement because again, you don't really know that person. Yeah. And I think it's important to use a mindset that you're going on an average date with somebody that you're slightly interested to kind of bring you back and center you yourself. Yeah. Because ultimately that's the reality of it is that this girl can be as beautiful as you want her to be. But if you find out that she's an empty shell and that she's right. very vapid and doesn't really have interests or values around it, it's not going to make a difference. It's like you're not going to be truly interested in this person. I mean, maybe, maybe for like a short term fling, but she's not going to keep your interests going. The other thing is if you're dating a lot, you have to learn how to enjoy it. And like, yeah, don't get excited in this way of like, oh, this girl's perfect, but get excited and like, oh, this is going to be a fun experience. Um, and as soon as you do that, like you become way more attractive just because you're like a fun guy. Like you're, you bring in, you're, you have a good mood, you bring in great energy, um, but then you're not putting the pressure on her being perfect. Otherwise you're going to be let down. Like you're going to have a great time. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And dating is a lot of fun. I mean, when I think about when I think about a date that I'm about to go on, it's just full of like anything could be possible with this person. Yeah. You know, I might see her in my mind at the beginning as being like maybe even like a six or something, something that I'm not super, super excited about. But the possibility of her opening up and showing me her personality, her values, the things that she finds exciting in the world. Like there's the possibility that that can open up and how fun is that to kind of like open up somebody as a shit, you know, to show the world what they're all about. It's very exciting to me. Yeah. So I think there's, a, there's a lot of fun to be had a lot of, a lot of lightness, a lot of, um, play and, and things like that to be had if you're, if you're willing to go into it like that. Right. I had a date like last week where I kind of had to like, I wasn't so excited for it and I had to like be like no this be open to this mm. and it did end up being just a nice a very good experience yeah uh, but i had to open myself up to like you don't know this person yet you know so what what could happen you don't know right let's go see i feel like simultaneously it should be i don't know what this person is i don't know what they're all about um and having that sort of expectation set but at the same time, being able to bring in, how would I go on a date with this person, who is unknown right now, imagining her to be the best version of herself? Similar to what we were talking about, you and I, about the following dates <laughs> that you're going on. Yeah. Like, well, that is if the you've same had, if you've had a phenomenal about. date with, 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 a, with a woman, Imagining every woman could fit into that that kind of framework is something that gives them space and capacity to be able to do that. Right. So it's like they're unknown, but we need to give them the full benefit of the doubt, the full space to be the great dating candidate that we want them to be at the same time. Yeah. And for me, it was meeting a phenomenal woman, realizing how I can how a woman can make me feel and then saying, Oh, let me see if, you know, let me let this other person do that same thing. Yes. You know, 
giving them the space to to be that absolutely and we've talked about that too which is like the feeling the feeling is your feeling and it was just that someone else did something that invoked it in you and mm. now that you felt that instead of being like oh that was that person instead be like oh that happened to me yes that's now something i own that i can know i can feel again mm-hmm. and then go into experiences like oh shit i might have that happen to me again absolutely bro yeah yeah been getting into that sam harris podcast and just been Huge getting man. closer and closer to the understanding that everything that's happening around me is my own experience mm -hmm. and that kind of <laughs> relates to what you're talking about yeah. when somebody brings up something in you that you feel is very unique to just you experiencing them mm -hmm. realizing that that experience is actually a part of you and not and they just they just triggered it out of you right um, you tie it to them you tie it to them we because that's that. what we're doing all the time. We're tying everything to our external environment. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, that your greatest love, your greatest connection is is something that is fully available to you at all times with any with any woman that is willing to receive that. Or in yourself. Yeah. From yourself. I mean, in some ways. Um, which we'll kind of talk about later. But yeah. So... Yeah, first dates, it's just like going in with the right, don't overthink what you're doing. Um, if you go in with the right expectations, which are, again, like low expectations, but give them the space, give them the room to grow and to, you know, don't expect that they will be great, but don't expect that they'll be nothing. Just be open. Yes. Be very open to like what they could be. Yes. Give them high ceiling. When you open up a space, you're making space for a small, you know, expression of mm -hmm. the woman, but also a massive expression yeah. as well. But if you just keep a small expectation of what they're capable of being, then you're never going to. You'll just see that. Yeah. And you'll miss out. And then also you won't know because you, you might be like, oh, they might be way better. I just didn't give them the chance. But if you give them the chance, now you know. You know who exactly. they are. Exactly. Because you gave them that opportunity. Exactly. And what that requires of you is <laughs> giving up your your old stories and stop, you know, there's just such a drive within us to imagine that the last date we went on is going to represent the next date that we go on. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just, it's just always, that's always occurring. And that's just our, that's just our, our, our mind and body just trying to protect us, you know? Right. Because that's our brain learning or trying to learn. Yes. But it, it does overemphasize the recent stuff. So practicing this, this, this capacity, this, this space, this clearing, you know, you really need to, it, it really needs to be a discipline. It needs to be a very uh, intentional mind exercise mm -hmm. to use with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dating, I mean, it's, it's tricky. It's a hard thing because it feels like something you get better at doing. Like you think that, but really what you're getting better at is all internal. It's all like how you go into the date. Yes. Yourself. Yes. And the things you're like telling yourself before. It doesn't have to do as much with how you are like, I don't know, how you are being to her. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Let's go to our community question. Um, this question is talking to groups of girls seems to be harder than just one girl. How do you rewrite that narrative? Now I had a thought when I read this, cause I was like, Oh, I rewrote that narrative. And then I was like, Oh shit. But, uh, I'm terrified of talking to groups with guys in them. Like if there's a, a beautiful girl and then she's with a group and there are even if there's one guy there all of a sudden i'm like oh shit i can't do this i'm not doing that like this guy's gonna judge me and i don't know exactly why that is because if it was all girls then i would feel not comfortable obviously i mean i think you just said it. i think you said because the guy is gonna judge you yes but why why would that change anything why would why should i care if a guy judges me versus a girl 
it could be some kind of like male competition that's like deeply ingrained in me. I think I think it's I think it's the embarrassment of the guy saying that thing to you with the women there. That's what's coming to my mind. The guy saying what to me? Um, you know, something mocking or or you know, calling you out or challenging in you women. in front of the women, in front of his women. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I think it's less about it's less about some some dude, you know, that like let, imagine another scenario, right? Like you're out approaching women and some guy by himself notices that you did that and he he goes up and he says something inflammatory towards you. That's not going to be as big of a deal as it is for him doing that in front of a group of women yeah. who, you know, I'm trying to imagine that situation now of actually doing it. I don't know. I, I feel like it is actually the same as if like if, if I was approaching a girl and there was a guy right next to her, but not with her. I think that's the same feeling. So if there's a you go up and approach a woman and then there's a guy that overhears your approach. Yeah, he was right there. Yeah. And does he call it out to you while the woman's still there? No, he doesn't have to call it out. I still feel just nervous about it. Well, maybe you feel nervous because maybe you're, you're feeling that he might call you out. It could be in front of her, but yeah, picture might, picture the scenario. It's... Picture the scenario if you're walking away from the woman mm -hmm. down the sidewalk. The guy saw you from afar. It's just you and him, and he says something. I don't know if I even care at that point. Yeah, I don't think you do because <laughs> I wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> I've had that happen where like their boyfriend comes up. Yeah. And I've never, if I had gone in knowing that, then I would have been scared. But when it happens, it's not. Yeah. It's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Like there was one where like I was talking to this girl at the grocery store. Um, and we were talking for like a minute and then some guy just came and like put eggs in her cart. <laughs> oh my God. And he was like, what's up, man? <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> She's like, yeah, that's my boyfriend. Wow. Um, but it was like a good, it was, there's nothing bad about that. Yeah. And we've also seen multiple experiences of dudes come like dropping in mm -hmm. after an approach with some of our clients as well. I know you've had more than one experience of that too. Oh, of someone else. Yeah. Dropping into the, approach. or like a, like a boyfriend specifically. Oh, I see. Boyfriend. Yeah. 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 I have had that. Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. I thought you were talking about having someone else in the group drop in because that's happened too. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, Will, so his, his question was exactly what again? How to rewrite the narrative that like talking to a group of girls is so much harder than talking to just one. Okay. Well, it is, it is harder. <laughs> There's no two ways around that. It's, it's more exciting though. It's very exciting. And, you know, um, really, you're not going to really know that until you put yourself in that position. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to have to be a trial by error. You're going to have to force yourself to get into some group conversations. Yeah. And every time that that you that I've done that, that other of our clients have gone into group conversations, um, they've generally turned out pretty good. Sometimes every once in a while. Women don't want to be interrupted in the middle of their conversation, which is totally reasonable. Um, but we've seen multiple situations where, you know, it's been accepted. Remember that one that you had at Punchbowl Social? Oh, yeah. that was my like first. That was incredible. Big group approach. Yeah, and tell tell the listeners what happened to you there. Oh yeah, so I was with Tim and Dylan, and we were at Punchbowl Social in the domain in Austin. Um, and we just kind of were in there and we were about to leave. And then I saw this group of girls and I was like, I don't want to do it. But I kind of told Tim, I was like, there's a group over there. And then Tim was like, you gotta do it. 
And then I was like, okay, okay. And so me and Tim made a deal. If I did it, we were going to leave right after. Like Tim and Dylan went to the door. They were like ready to go. Um, and so I went up to this group and I was like, hey guys, I just had to say you all look great tonight. Um, they all freak out. They're like, oh my gosh. Um, they asked my name. We had like a little conversation. Um, and then I excused myself. It was one of those where like, okay, I did the thing. I got to get out now. Um, so I get, I go back and I'm like, okay, time to go. Um, I go up to Tim and Dylan and they're like, what happened? And I tell them that story. And then Tim's like, well, did you tell one of them? Like, did you kind of single any of them out to say that you were especially interested? And I hadn't, even though there was one that I was interested in. I think that, yeah, I think, I think you let us know that when you first yeah. went up. Yeah. So I was wondering about that. And so I didn't do that because at that time I was, I had all types of weird stories in my head about how I had to be nice. So I had to compliment everybody. And by complimenting just one, I was like taking away from the other ones. And so Tim was like, I think you have to do that. And so I was like, fuck, I, can't. <laughs> I just got away. Um, and so I went back to their table and I went up to the one and I said, Hey, I you know I just came up to you guys, but I, I didn't tell you. I thought you were really pretty. Um, and another girl at the table was like, Oh my God. Okay. Exchange numbers right now. Um, and she helped me out. And so then I gave her my number and then, yeah, that was that. And that was probably like the kind of experience that led me to be like, oh, this is okay. Like nothing bad is going to come to me if I go approach a group of girls. Yep. And it just, it takes those kind of moments where yeah. you. There is... It wasn't even like that I got the number. It was just the, the acceptance from the group. Yeah. 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 And something we talked about in bot with body language is that if you notice where all of the women's legs are, are directed when they're sitting down or their feet when they're standing up. If they're in a group of women and they're all pointing towards one woman, they're generally like the, the alpha of the group. They're generally like the leader of the group. So making friends with them as you made friends, as, as the woman hyped you up yeah. in that situation, that's kind of your way of getting in the ins to the group. So if, you know, if you're able to spot uh, uh, some kind of pattern there talking to that that alpha lady first and getting in her good, good graces is the way to do it so you might want to even just like go over to the group compliment the alpha lady and then maybe compliment the, the woman that you're really interested in that feels weird though i feel like you want to just be direct with who you're interested in i think i think if you are strong and confident in yourself even if you're nervous, because I went up and I was like, I'm so nervous right now. Um, but being confident in that, in your state, I don't know if you need to, you know, go for that, that in, in that way. I hear you. I think, I think though, that you might be able to, maybe not, maybe not just like cater directly to the alpha, but certainly make sure that you're respecting her place in the group and certainly let that be known so you can gain that access. Yeah. There's one other group when I'm thinking of now where it was similar. There was like a group of girls walking and I went up um, and I had my dog with me and we like, it was so awkward because the street was only the crosswalk was only this wide and there was a choke point on the other side where like there were like railings. And I didn't get in in time, so I had to like walk behind them and then like get around. <laughs> um, and and then I complimented one of them, and then it was one of the other ones who was definitely like the alpha. And she was like, "You guys should uh, exchange contact information." Yeah. Um, and so I do feel like it can happen naturally, like where the alpha just kind of steps in and like pushes it along. Mm -hmm. But then again, you probably do need to be accepted by her. I mean, I think that there, my, my assumption is that when women are out like in a group of girls, that there's, there's the concern of security. Yeah. And I think that 
you'll often find that the alpha is kind of like at the the center of the security, mm. making sure that everybody's it's safe. Good. Yeah, you know. So if there's some way to 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 communicate to to the alpha that there's that this is that I'm an, that I'm a safe guy by showing respect, showing that you're harmless in that kind of way, I think that can be helpful. Yeah. So. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a while <laughs> to be as mindful in those kind of situations. I think I think for people just starting for guys just starting out that want to get more comfortable talking to groups is really just gonna be trial and error. It's really gonna be um just throwing yourself into those situations. I had a I had one of my first clients. Um he he and I went out to East Sixth Street uh early in the morning or early in the evening. And he hadn't talked to anybody. Uh, we weren't really finding anyone that he was interested in talking to. And then all of a sudden he's like, I like that girl that, at that table, uh, surrounded by other women. And I was like, all right, well, there's your one. He just went straight up to it. He, uh, all, the, all the ladies were just like, oh, that's so sweet that you would say that to her. And he ended up talking to that girl for quite a while. And I, I, was, I was in disbelief that his first approach <laughs> was a group. And he ended up talking to that girl for a while. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, I think it looks and feels a lot more dangerous for guys, a lot more frightening than it actually is. Right. Because it feels like you could get rejected by more than one person. Oh, that's another thing, Will. Multiple women rejecting you. <laughs> that hurts. Yeah. That's, that's scary. Yeah. And, and there's the thing where, like, we want, if we get rejected, we don't want anyone to know about it because it feels like that lowers who we are right and so it's like right. let's just you know get rejected by one if we have to and yeah not let anyone else you know be involved in that because then they also are going to reject us right and you know all this this fear of rejection all comes back from our hunter gatherer days when we were in tribes and you know if you can imagine yourself as a lone wolf out on the savanna and you're looking you you come upon a tribe of people that um that you you you're seeking shelter, food, water, like you're out of resources and you find this tribe of people and for some reason or another you're not accepted into them. Well, then that's just you back on, you know, that same hard luck trail. Yeah. So that's where we get this from cuz that stuff is still deep inside of us. And it's just like if you get in a you, yeah we used to live in smaller groups and so if you get rejected by someone everyone knows and now you're out of mating options right because you got rejected right um, right so that's where it is it's different now because just go somewhere else mm -hmm. go a table over um but yeah it used to be it used to be much more daunting and yeah the ultimate rejection would mean you had to leave Yup. And then that's, you're probably going to die alone. Yup. <laughs> and that's exactly what we feel like yeah. when we get rejected. <laughs> We're going to die alone. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It, it is. That's deeply ingrained. That's a scary one <laughs> to, uh, to face. Yeah. Re <laughs> rewriting that narrative is, that takes work. Um, but training yourself. Letting yourself see that, oh, I can get rejected even by a group and I'll be okay. Yep. Um, you have to just teach yourself that. Awesome. That's it for our reactions, questions. Um, yeah, all of that. Um, yeah. Do you want to go into your topic or should we go into mine? Um, let's, let's do mine. Yeah, I, let's start I'm with just yours. Very nervous right now to talk about it. So. Okay, that's all good. I mean, well, you you feel you feel oh, free to do whatever you want. I'm to do. ready to go into it. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm nervous right now talking about this, but let's let's do it. Let's go. Um, so I had a an experience last week where I had a date, and at the end of it. I went in for the kiss. 
and it uh it turned into a hug let's say that she turned it into a hug um and i don't know i don't know if you've ever had that happen to you oh yeah um but it's a weird feeling yeah. it's a, like pretty overwhelming feeling um so i i felt like just so uncomfortable so awkward so like i don't even know regretful almost like why did i do that um and basically like my flight instinct kicked in um i was in her car so i just like got out of the car um and then i was i had to take a second to myself i'm like Whew. and then i was like no i'm gonna go back in so i got back in and i just i'm the kind of guy where like i'm not that smooth i don't like picking up on like subtle cues i'd rather just get it out in the open and so i was just like i just tried to kiss you <laughs> and then i was like and i'm gonna overthink this now um and what i realize now is that i was looking for validation both in going for the kiss and in then in that moment going back and like saying that I, I was looking for her to just say something to be like oh it's okay like i like you i just didn't want you know something and this girl did not give me anything she smiled and she just looked at me <laughs> and she wouldn't give it to me and yeah that's what i'm realizing now is i was just basically like give me validation like that's what i was saying to her was give me validation give me validation she was like no that's not what this is and it's made me think so much about how on dates that kiss at the end for me has often been validation it's been like me saying like oh did you like the date as well okay we let's have this kiss um which i don't think is a good reason that's not what you know that kind of intimacy is for yeah it's not for validating anything yeah um yeah and so i was thinking a lot more about that um and it showed me a lot because like i said I, I learned all that um and i realized that uh there's a part of me that seeks that validation and then there's another part of me that's like the cool part like it's a good part it's i think more mature more ahead but the problem is that this mature part looks down on the other part and it beats him up, yells at him. It uh, admonishes like it, it's just very, it's not a good relationship. And that other part is seeking validation in the external because it isn't receiving it where it needs it, which is in the internal. But when you say mature part, that's mm -hmm. the part that is saying, you know, don't, don't ask for validation. Is that true? Is that what you're saying? It's saying, um, yeah, it's saying like, why are you asking? Why are you looking for validation out there? That's what it's saying. Got you. So I would say that, you know, you have that really young part that's seeking for the validation. Then you have an older part, but not necessarily mature part let's just just be clear on that term yeah. part that's like saying like you know don't show her that you that you want her don't show her anything that make it is going to make you look weak and sh make it seem like you're seeking validation but i don't think it's that i really don't i i did mean mature because i do feel like this part has grown more um and it's not saying don't show her these things don't be that in front of her it's saying okay. like why are you not mature like me oh why are you not up to this level but then it's because you haven't accepted i haven't accepted that part right and i i still think that that you know mature part is still not as mature as you're about to become by accepting right and giving the giving the awareness and the love and the attention to the part that is hurting um, that needs that validation. That's where you can. That's where you can grow on that. Yeah, and so that's where I realized the the way to get rid of that need for external validation and everything is not to push it away, 
but to focus your energy on validating it yourself. Yeah. And sometimes that may mean that you have to, you know, go back to a younger version of yourself and sit with it for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, when I was at some point along this magnanimous journey that I've been on, I was having to work with those inner parts of myself. And what I would actually do is I would sit when I was really hurting and I, I could tell that that younger version of me was really calling out in a very similar way that you're talking about. I would actually envision that younger, that younger version of me, that boy. And I would have him come over to the couch with me and hang out. And I would give him all of the reassurance that, that I didn't get when I was younger. Um, but I would actually like really visualize and actually see him there with me and being able to like see, use my brain to see exactly what he looked like back then really made a massive difference in him and his presence there. Like really bringing that boy in. Like yeah. Accepting him. Yeah. Yeah. The thing for me that's been really helping is um, recognizing how hard that part is trying. It's trying so hard and it's trying to protect me. That's what it's doing. Um, and so giving myself that, being like, thank you for protecting me. But then moving forward, like, this isn't what I need right now. This isn't the kind of, prote- like, I'm pretty strong myself. I don't need that protection anymore. Yeah. Um, bringing that part in, getting him on my side, mm-hmm. moving forward like that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really, yeah, embracing and appreciating, being grateful for that part. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard one. That's like my biggest problem, I think, in the whole dating. Validation. And even outside of dating, too, just social is validation. Validation. It's always like, needing the constant validation because like you can i think we all need some type of validation because we live in the world like we need to know what works what's right what's true but it's when you've learned what's true and then you're still questioning it and you need something to validate it and it's also when you're seeking validation from sources outside sources like people you don't know Mm, yeah that that's where you get into trouble. Yes. But if you have a group of friends that you've been with for a while, you have some trusted confidants, getting validation from them is a lot more healthy. Right. Because they know you, see you, and they know you know that they have their, your best interests in mind. But these people out here don't owe you anything. I mean, she didn't owe you anything. No, she didn't. And again, it's like, that's not what that is. That's not what I, when I really think about it, that's not what I want from her. I don't want validation. Yeah. Um, so I'm very like grateful to her for, for doing that to me. <laughs> yeah, me dude. That. And what was brilliant is that afterwards, uh, after Will experienced this, he, you ended up talking to me. Uh-huh. I gave you that validation. Yes. That's the place you want to get the validation from. You don't want to get it from the source. You want to get it from your trusted confidants. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just, you know, it, otherwise, if you're not getting validation from sources that you can trust then you're leaving it all up to yourself to to be absolutely 100 percent certain and you can do that to some degree but you also may make some wrong choices in how you see yourself right yeah i've done that too yeah um that's why they say you're the product of like the five closest friends that you have or something like that. You are the average of your five. Yeah. Closest something friends. like that, because you're relying upon them for that, for that validation, for that check in. And yeah, you know, yeah, that's definitely true. Having like an external view that you trust to look at your situation and be like, Oh, this is kind of how it is. Yeah. Cause when you're in the middle of it, emotions can play too big of a role. Right. And so for guys that, maybe don't have a close knit friend group. Cause I know that there's some guys out there like that. Mm-hmm. Consider joining a men's circle Yes. or our program, the art of approach where we're going to be doing a mastermind every week yeah. during our course too. That's just another example. The mastermind is, is really set up for that so that you can have that sort of com- camaraderie, that sort of confidant, that comrade, you know? Yeah. Where you can be like completely vulnerable 
about your situation yeah. and get other people to look at it honestly. Yeah. Because if you aren't, then it's hard for them to really see what's going on. Yeah. 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 When we're in our when we're when we're in our heads, it's actually a very small place. Mm-hmm. We do need to get out of our heads and we do need to have that support system. So men's group, therapist, counselor, something like that out there that you can get that validation from. Yeah. And then working on getting it. Because again, like if you're constantly needing like revalidation, I guess I would call it like when you know something, but then you need it validated over and over and over. I think that's a sign that you need to figure something out. That's when you need to go deeper yourself. and yeah. you need to do that sort of inner child work that we we're talking about yeah. with a therapist or, you know, the sort of um, visualization exercise that I mentioned um, or journaling to your inner child. The one that's hurting can be a way that you can kind of sort and work that stuff out. And, you know, this might seem like, to some people, silly woo-woo stuff, but um, it really makes a huge difference. It really changes things inside of you, this inner, this inner child stuff. It is unbelievably powerful. Yeah. That's a great point, because I probably wouldn't have, I would have been very skeptical. I've been like, is this really going to do anything? Well, for those skeptical people out there, give it a try and see what happens. Yeah. I, I, I challenge you, because I pretty much guarantee that if you do it, if you fully invest in the activity, either the visualization, the journaling, or the or or seeking a therapist for this particular thing, you will see massive, massive differences. Because we are nothing but a we're nothing but a creature of experiences. And in every experience that we've had, no matter who you are, you're gonna have traumas attached to those things. And sorting out those traumas is going to bring you into the full presence, the full potential of what you can actually achieve. Because there's like charged things that like are playing a bigger role than they should. Like you're overlearning for certain things. Yep. Um, yeah, definitely. And that, I mean, that's going to come out in other ways, like even just on appro- in approaches and obviously on dates, if you're seeking validation. Um, it's not, it's not attractive. It's not like a good quality to have. Yeah. Because then you're, it's again, it's like that taking mentality. Um, you're like, give me this, give me this validation. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if you're just giving mode, um, you validate yourself. Yep. You don't need anything from this person. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah, that, that inner child work is a, it's a, an express way to being able to validate yourself. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to be working on that more, talking to that part, um, getting him on my side. Yeah, and something even more magical sounding that you can do is just straight up ask it what it need, what it needs. Yeah, <clears throat> sit in your in your room or your apartment by yourself. Just look up the wall and be like, what do you need? And just wait for an answer and see if something happens. Because it's strange it's magic. I can't explain it. But for some reason, these, these things speak back to us. These versions of ourselves speak back. Your subconscious. Coming up with something. I don't know what it is. Who knows? But it's for some reason works. Yeah. I've had conversations with myself many, many times. I was telling you. Well. Yeah. And they work great. They're so great. You sound like a madman when you're doing it, but they you get they freaking out work it. for some reason. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So um, that was that was my topic, and I was I was very nervous to talk about that, but um, I'm happy to have. Yeah, I commend you for doing so, brother. I've done that. Um. Yeah, because I don't need validation from this podcast. I can just <laughs> exactly. have it in myself. Exactly. And I'm also validating you as a trusted confidant that <laughs> that was really valuable too. stuff. Thank you. And I'm sure the listeners that are that are on the same wavelength are thinking the same way. Right. What um yeah, what do you want to talk about? Any good topics? 
Um, I don't have anything else. I was my my main thing I wanted to bring in was talking about the bad boys, and we got to that earlier. Yeah, yeah. So let me think. What else is up? Yeah, I I liked that thing about the going into a date with high uh, hopes or high like capacity. Yeah, capacity. The low expectations. Yeah. Um. What if we talk about like red flags, recognizing red flags for guys? Okay. And, yeah. Uh, and actually acting like I I've had that where I ignore them. Um, because it's fun. It's like the beginning of something. And I'm just like, oh, that's just a part of her. It's, it's okay. She's perfect. Yeah. Um, so how do you go into stuff and like really be like, oh, shit, no, that's that's a problem. <laughs> or like keep an eye out for that stuff. And yeah. I think that's the bigger part is not investing yourself too quickly. Mm. Yeah keeping it an open mind when you don't really know someone that there could be something this might not work this might not be a match instead of being like oh i hope it's a match i really want it to be yeah um you know we talked about it earlier earlier in this podcast where because men are so hypnotized by the beauty of the woman that they just set their sights on that and that's all that they're focusing on how can i create an outcome with that and it comes back to being presence it also comes back to being um it also comes back to being aware that we're, we're fooling ourselves and that we're tricking yeah. ourselves a lot of the time right and it's really hard when you're when you have a bombshell of a lady that you're just so <laughs> so desiring so lusting after and she's coming to that date with you it's so hard to be clear and to be um balanced and anchored to the ground because you just want to go off yeah. you know you want to do everything you want to do everything you possibly can to make sure that that day goes well yes and it is like inherent in guys yes that like when sex is like on the table it's that's hard. all yes, that, that's that distorts everything where our mind goes yes um so you know what i talked about getting yourself in the mindset of like this is an average girl this is a you know i'm i'm slightly interested in this what Get, do you uh what do you think about i don't know how common this is but for a guy to be like i don't have sex on the first date what do you think about that I I was doing that yeah before I met Delia. And um I I highly recommend it if, mm -hmm. especially if like I think you're wanting can... more serious authentic relationships and then you can help yourself a little bit ground yourself in that first date because you're not looking for that. Yes. You're not willing to look away at, from certain things because you just want to get to that. Right, but there's a balancing act there. And the balancing mm -hmm. act is that you don't want to shut that part off completely. Right. Yeah. You just, when the time comes, you just want to say, not tonight. Mm -hmm. So you <laughs> want to. That's hard. That's I know. So I know. And uh, I was not successful of, with it <laughs> the, first, the first time I did it either, by the way. Um, but it is, it is powerful um, saying that straight up. Because, especially if there's a lot of sexual tension, because that increases the sexual tension. The fact that the girl notices that you're into her, she notices that she's into you, and you're saying, mm -mm, not tonight, that's not how I roll. It also shows that, you have your, that you're more value-oriented and that you know what you want. Yeah. What do you think about... Because I've been thinking about this with the kiss, failed kiss story I told, um, which is not needing to kiss on the first date. I think you could do something similar with the, we're not having sex. Yeah. And, and it's, that it's be... not that like I'm going to avoid it because I don't think that's, but it's like if there's not a good opportunity or there's not a good moment, then I don't need to. Yeah. There's you want no reason to force it. Well, you, 
I think what, what you could do is um, essentially keep all of your your sexual energy uh, open and expressive. Yeah. And then at the end of the date, when y'all are saying goodbye, you could potentially say um, something like, you know, I've been thinking about kissing you all night, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it right now because I want to, I want to, I want to hold off. Yeah. It's not know? the time. Yeah. And you can start, you can start there. But she, I mean, if, if she's feeling it, she's probably going to want to some way pull it off, you know? Yeah. But um, better to, better to just keep that off the table. Just, you know, um, for just for the sake of it, I think. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking is like, I was talking with another friend about, um, he was saying like, Building up the kiss, um, kind of making it a bigger moment. Yeah, um, which I think can be very powerful. I think that's what women are really wanting. The thing, the thing, my problem there isn't the validation as like that's a thing, but it's the story I'll tell myself, which is like, oh, you were too scared to do it, like you couldn't do it, mm. you know, like you took an excuse. Yeah, you didn't kiss her because you made up an excuse that. You don't want to do it yet, but really you were just scared. Yeah. And that's that's the other reason I go for the kiss on the first date is to like prove to myself, like, yeah, I can I'll go for it. Yeah, but again, if you like if you have the doors open to the kiss, but yeah. you still say not now. Right, right. That's different. But I'm saying I I see it differently. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that you're seeing it differently because that's all you're used to. Yeah. But there's another way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just through that clear expression of desire, of desire, that declaration right. that that's right. something that you that you desire. Yeah, I think that's the part I need to hold on to or own more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um. Yeah, have you had any interactions lately? Anything? no not since our last meetup cool i've been heads down i kind of freaked this girl out at heb yesterday how so she's she like didn't realize i was talking to her like i was waving and then she like moved out of the way because she thought i was like trying to get by or something and then she like jumped when i kept going up to her <laughs> Um, and that always freaks me out when, when I freak someone out, then I get nervous, which makes it worse. Yup. Like there's other people who, um, are in the group. One guy specifically I'm thinking about, and he, um, one time I was with him and he came up and talked to someone and they had earbuds in and they literally jumped like they, yeah. um, and he just started like laughing so much and being like, Oh my God, I just scared you so. And like, then they started laughing too. And that was fine so i think that's the, the better path to take yeah rather than like me getting nervous because they just got nervous <laughs> yeah it's um you know but that's coming down to being just being present in the situation and re recognizing that it is a silly thing yes it is a very silly thing but um those feelings still come up mm -hmm. whether you like it or not the the concern of 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 scaring somebody you know is still going to come up right if you can find a way in that moment though to just like snap it snap it back and be like oh this is so funny this is like this is a ridiculous thing <laughs> there's no reason that you had to be scared of me even right. though even though you you were for a legitimate reason but it's still by laughing it off you're just like there was no reason you had to be scared right. of me like it you can understand why they were scared yeah but that doesn't mean there's any reason now to be scared yeah yeah and that's the same with like sometimes you get like a weird look when you go into an approach and they're like skeptical of you and it's the same thing it's like yes i see why you're skeptical but you don't have to be right there's no reason to be right and owning that space rather than oh you're skeptical of me like you should be skeptical of me so now i need to act accordingly yeah 
or or her being skeptical of you is some reason for you to um convince yourself that you're someone that needs to be skeptical of yes like, that's what it is right nice yeah, yeah yeah and now you're trying to like prove yourself yeah like why you're not skeptical or why yeah. you're not worthy of being skeptical of yeah and what happens when you try to um argue or defend something <laughs> that's bad. that that someone else when you try to argue or defend some something about yourself that another person is making an interpretation of that you know not to be true is that you end up making yourself look even more guilty it's like the salem witch trials yeah <laughs> yeah it's hard to defend yourself against that i know i know like, i'm not a creep i swear <laughs> it's not gonna work yeah we're on uh at the art of approach we're running ads and uh we're getting all kinds of trolls that are leaving comments on our ads and um one of the things that will was telling me is that somebody said scam at the end and i'm just like i'm not even gonna i mean i don't if i were to try to even respond to that that just like inherently makes me look guilty yeah you know like no it's not a scam <laughs> believe me it's not a scam yeah you have to you it's have like, to of trust the scammer would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And there's no way there's no way to argue yourself out of that. Um you just have to know that you're it's not a scam and let them think that. Yeah. Be okay with that. Yeah. The best thing you can do is just hold on to your own integrity of your desires, your the way that you know yourself to walk the world, mm -hmm. the way you know yourself to be at the heart of who you are and you have to just you have to just hold on to that. You cannot let anybody's interpretation of you define who you are. Yeah. And speaking of, I was going to bring that up when we were talking about validation, is we're getting so many just people <laughs> saying the stupidest shit to us. <laughs> um, and it's like not letting that validate any belief. Yeah. Or, you know, in either direction, good or bad. Mm hmm. Um, it's very important to be like, this is not the person I'm going to listen to or yeah. like base any of my beliefs on. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, this goes back to how we judge success for an approach. Mm -hmm. um, if we get the external reinforcement that that approach went really well, I got her phone number. Woohoo. I'm going to be going on a date with this girl. Let's celebrate. Let's get all pumped up. Yeah. It's gonna give it's gonna give the same weight to measuring ourselves against external reinforcement when it's negative at the same time. So just stick true with what you know about yourself. Make your own story. Define who you are. That's the best we can do. That's a good thing to end on. Let's do it. Awesome. Great podcast. All right. Well, thank you all, folks, for joining us for yet another uh, Art of Approach podcast. Again, this was the ninth episode, and we'll be, we'll be back next week for episode 10. And we can't wait to see you there. Have a great day.